Thank you so much, Joanne. And um, thank you everybody for being here today. Um, I'm very fortunate to be working with an amazing group of people and advocates around the world. My journey for health equity started more than a quarter century ago. Health equity word was starting to make its way into our health advocacy language. And I was heading a small health center in an urban slum area. Uh, one day after hours of waiting for her turn, a woman in tattered clothes carrying a naked child walked into my outpatient. I thoroughly examined her, handed over the prescription. She looked at me strangely and said, where's the medicine? And I said, she could take my prescription to the chemist shop and she can get the medicine and that would make her uh, healthy or that would help her complain. Uh, she looked at me. That's a look that I can remember like yesterday. If I close my eyes, I can remember her face, her child, her tone of voice. She tore my prescription, threw at me and said, what good is this? if you do not have medicine for me. Yes, what, what good is a valid written prescription if she could not buy the medicine? Health, health equity is not about one or the other piece of healthcare delivery. It is about removing all the obstacle in the way of health. No, no matter what I did, no matter what job I took and no matter where I live, I think of that woman and child and so many millions who do not have access to fundamental right, health. Health equity is about social justice. You know, um, COVID is at the top of our mind, of course, rightly so. Health disparities existed before COVID-19. COVID has further exposed and increased them. They existed, the health disparities, they existed between countries, they existed within countries. Let me take you to my own experience on that. I grew up in India with social political privilege, advocating for rights is in my DNA and being a physician and with time being engaged with human rights movement, health rights became focus for me over years. When I moved to US almost two decades ago, I did not have health insurance for some time. I hurt my foot very badly. It was, it was small, swollen like a watermelon. Uh, maybe a cantaloupe, uh, but anyway, it, I ended up doing home treating my foot and it would not cross my mind that I would not have access to a doctor when I was living in India. For the first time I felt what health inequities are in a way that I had not felt before. I felt that, I felt them first person and it's different. Let me tell you, it's very different as an advocate when we are advocating for others and when we put ourselves in that situation and it's a circle. It's, it's um, we could end up on the other side at any time. Um, you know, COVID-19 has pushed so many people who may not have thought they would end up on the other side of the fence, pushed over the edge into poverty, debt, and unable to afford the health uh, care. I bring up this point to share that disparities exist everywhere, in low and middle income countries and in high income countries. Achieving at a health uh, for all is a shared goal. It is the right thing to do, and it is in our self and trust as well. Again, COVID has made it even louder and more apparent. These are new, new issues. They existed before COVID. Health, achieving health equity is not going to be easy. It's a multi-generational marathon structured in a relay race. We work our best to work capacity and pass the baton to the next generation, hopefully in a better condition than what we received. We made better time than we had. It's a ring of fire. I look at it as a ring of fire and we have to go through it to succeed on any, any health goal. It is difficult, but there is a, there's no shortcut. However, we do have a strong suitable vehicle to get us to our goals, partnerships. Yes, partnerships that are equitable and diverse with the foundation of mutual respect and learning. The partnerships that confront and reject the power dynamic of colonial roots. Equitable partnerships are going to be messy, but that is their strength and not a weakness. You know, I remember an incident when I was organizing um, 
all party, all religion group in wake of the religious intolerance in India. And it's funny to remember that we did not have much fight on the content of what we are going to advocate, what we are going to, our messages are going to be. We had long discussions, robust opposing discussions on which color of the banner to use. You know, one party had an orange color, the other had blue. One religion had a green color, other had um, uh, white. So it was so difficult to pick the banner. But believe me, the messiness is its strength. Diversity is its strength. And we came out strong after six months of organizing and 5,000 strong people marched during the pouring rain. I, I remember that as a, as, a, as a learning and as well as very gratifying um, thing to do. When COVID-19 hit, in, in, hit India in recent times, and you've heard about how difficult the situation was in India. The Indian diaspora came together in a loosely structured group with a common goal to help the people and the country we come from. Um, a very diverse group of people, scientists, physicians, researchers, journalists, and some policy folks like me who intersect some of them, uh, some of those areas. And it, it is amazing how, how the language of each one of us is different. But common thread made us communicate um, through those barriers. It was messy. It was difficult. We are still sorting through it. Every night, we will have calls with people on the front line, the families, the doctors, the journalists, the officials, professional associations will show up. They will share with us what's going on and what's needed. And we will listen. The group will listen, form small groups. And, and then we will try to address as much as we could Organically, the group expanded to include people from neighboring countries, Bangladesh and Nepal, as the COVID hits the neighboring countries. The inform informal advocacy channels were forced at the regional and global levels, pushing for oxygen availability, medical and other technical support, vaccines. Some successes, but a long way to go. The devastation left by COVID will be felt for a long time. We all know that. The gains made towards health have receded by decades. We have a lot of work to do. More than ever, solidarity is needed among the global community to address the ongoing pandemic and also to pay it and build at all levels. As Joanne mentioned before, Action Global Health Advocacy Partnership has leveraged the diverse strengths of its 15 global partners to achieve very impressive successes at the regional and global level. Among many uniquenesses of this partner is the multi-directional sharing and collaboration. Information, knowledge, strategies we share that go from north to south, south to north, and everywhere possible. Why are women and girls disproportionately impacted by COVID-19? And um, I'll just uh, throw in some things that come to my mind and Rosemary then um, uh, uh, would love to hear your thoughts on it. So why is, it's a deep question and we discussed in the previous, um, previous session as well. And I'm thinking, what can we do moving forward so that women are not disproportionately impacted and if they are, then the issues are addressed not only to um, remove that disproportionate uh, impact, but also address it. So for me, as a, as a human rights activist, I feel like gender is at the, at the soul of everything we do, right? Whether we, if we are not collecting the data of how it is impacting gender and women in this case, and how are we going to determine what is affecting it and how are we going to allocate resources? So we need a data collection. We need a resource allocation specifically to address those. And then in implementation, we need to see that those, um, uh, communities that are affected, and in this case, women, and they need to be part of the solution and implementation. So I want to share a quick example on uh, the COVID work that we are doing with India community. Indian community uh, is, you know, one person shared the story. They said, okay, the vaccine is when even, even it's available, women are not going to, uh, we, women are not able to go out and get it. Because they, they're cooking, they're not able to isolate themselves, they're cooking, they don't have time. Everybody else uh, priority becomes, uh, takes the precedent in, in, uh, uh, in the family. 